everybody, welcome! Gamer School Makers, Falcon Plays It, we're gonna see what this game's all about. Um, just to give you a quick little overview of what we're looking at here, you've probably played games like either Game Dev Story on mobile devices or Game Dev Tycoon, you kind of have a pretty good idea as to what Gamers Go Makers is all about. I wouldn't really say it's much of a clone as much as it's basically using the same formula and adding things to it, and it's kind of like really inspired by games of that nature, but uh, to call it a straight up ripoff or anything like that, I mean, I know a lot of people will probably say that because of uh, the game, how it's structured and everything like that, but I don't see any other way to kind of do a simulation type of game that, you know, I guess simulates you creating your own video games and whatnot. But, um, it's a game along those lines, definitely, so if you've played games like Game Dev Tycoon and Game Dev Story, you kind of know what you're kind of getting involved with here. But for now, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a preview video for those of you that are probably on the fence of whether you want to get it or not. And secondly, kind of a little bit of a mini-series for myself. If you guys would like to see more of it, though, then let me know in the comments and whatnot, and I'll probably continue it. Otherwise, I just kind of want to do a few episodes here and there, just to kind of, uh, at least also suit my curiosity, and kind of have fun with it, because games to this nature is something that I really do enjoy quite a bit, just because it leaves a lot of, um, I guess, openness to your creativity. So either way, let's get involved with here. Gamers Go Makers, uh, we're gonna start a new game. Over here, you can basically name your company and name your player. So, as a little bit of an inside joke here in the channel, let's go with, um, In Reality Games. You either know what that means or you don't, so <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Play your name? Well, name is fucker Falcon, I guess. I'm the lead developer of In Reality Games. I wouldn't have it any other way. Difficulty normal sounds good. Start decade the 80s, just because that's when I was born. That's when the Falcon was conceived, so we might as well start off there. Back when I was, you know, full of hope and aspirations in life, as opposed to how I've been beaten down by society these days, then, you know, nothing really matters, right? Very depressing introduction, I'm aware of that. <laughs> Either way, what do I look like? That's a very good question. What is the self, though, right? I'm gonna say I could need a little bit of a haircut, so maybe some dude with like a... Nah, that's a little bit too clean cut. I'm gonna say that kind of works out relatively well. I'd really need to cut my hair. It's fucking hot as shit for long hair these days. Oh, I have a little bit of a apparently t-ball type of shirt. I could join a Little League team now. I wasn't able to do it in real life, but apparently in video games I can't. Oh, that was like a perfect uh, Little League shirt. Oh, who's laughing now, Mom and Dad? <laughs> Apparently the guy designing video games in his own basement. Dressed up as a little eager. So we'll do that. Sure, we'll rock those pants in. How about we get some fucking slamming shoes over here, like some neon shit. Neon purple sounds pretty goddamn good. Neon green? Oh, no, wait a minute. Let me... Neon green sounded really goddamn good, All right? Let me just be, like, really eccentric off the bat here. Alrighty, so... Um, this is where, um, game, Gamers Go Makers kind of differentiates a little bit from Game Dev Tycoon and Game Dev Story, where it kind of adds a lot more, I guess, content. Not that those games are devoid of content, but this kind of takes it one step further. There's a lot more emphasis on things that you want to focus on, while the other aforementioned games don't necessarily go into that deep of an extent. So that's where the game kind of takes its little, you know, where it could be going left with the rest of the games, it goes right instead. So, I'll show you what that's all about, though. Initially, though, what are your strengths? Uh, please choose three from the following list to boost your starting skill in this area. Mind you, I'm gonna play how I like to... How I like my games. So, I like a lot of gameplay. I like a good game engine. Graphics, I don't really care too much. Um, sound design is actually pretty good. Let me do gameplay, game engine, and level design, I'm gonna say. I like my level designs, I like my game engine, I like my gameplay. Everything else is kind of, like, secondary, but... If you kind of keep me interested with how I'm playing the game, then I'll probably stick around. So we'll do that. Gamers Go Makers, choose your starting location. Each starting location has its own characteristics, which may give you a benefit of some kind in play. So, again, this is another thing that um, Gamers Go Makers does differently, where you basically choose where your base of operation will be, and each area will give you an inherent bonus depending on which. Think of it kind of like XCOM or something, where each um, country gives you like a bonus to some sort of stat or some sort of income, development, etc., etc. I've gone through all of these, um, I'm gonna just scroll them through them really quickly so you can see what's uh, what's all about if you want to pause the video and kind of see what's it all about. I'm gonna go with Russia. I will explain why soon, but here's Japan, South Korea, China, US, Brazil, got Buenos Aires, Argentina, got Germany, London, South Africa, Canada, and we have some Australia over here. By the way, Australia, is it really true that you guys are casual gamers? This thing claims that you are in Australia. Casual games are more popular than other games. Now, let me guys know, if you're from Australia, let me know. Is that really true? Are you guys casual? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, that's a kind of a bold statement for a game to make. Uh, I want to go with Ros uh, Moscow. I was going to go with Roscow. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go with Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. So Moscow Rush is gonna work out for me. Thinkers is a better start in Russia. You receive a bonus on Game Engine and Strategy War Games, plus 10% on Game Engine and plus 10 rating for Strategy War Games. So I'm a big strategy fan, as you've probably seen in the channel. Like, I love my XCOM, I love my Xenonauts, etc, etc. So I'm gonna go with that on that base alone, and again, plus in a game engine, which is something that I really kind of value in video games, so I'm gonna go with that. And we're gonna load up here. Hello, and welcome to Gamers Go Makers. The 80s are back, as you can see. First, you may want to decorate your office by picking a wallpaper. You can choose from a fine selection of the most beautiful wallpapers of the 80s. Now, again, you could kind of uh, design what you want to do here. So if you scroll around, you'll be able to kind of switch things around. Apparently, I'm here, I'm stuck in Tron World. I might actually go with that, honestly. And, um, let's see. My lord, some of these are like, you know, you'd have to be tripping some major balls to choose some of these wallpapers. Kind of makes sense, though. You're over here designing games high off of your mind and something. I'm gonna go with Tron World, though. Excellent choice. That's my favorite, too. Game? You lie to me. That's not your favorite. You're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing choosing that, but it's okay. Now, go ahead. Click on your character and then start your business by creating your first game and have fun. I will have fun. Let me pause the game here really quickly. One of the things you want to keep in mind is pause the game whenever you're kind of um, thinking about what you're doing. Otherwise, the game's going to keep going in real time, and days will be passing, and you know, when um, you have to remember that you have to pay for your, um, living room, or <laughs> your living quarters, I should say, so it costs like 2000 a month, at least in the startup area. So over here, you can kind of scroll around and see what's up. On this one, it'll tell you what games have been released so far. So, apparently, in the start of 1980 is when the game industry first started, so there's no games that are right now accessible. It's going to actually happen after we start our own company and other game designs get involved, too. The market share will tell you about um, the different consoles over here. The Atapi, not Atari, Atapi 2600. Um, it requires 50,000 for a license, which um, would be all of our fun, so we're not going to get involved with that just yet. But it has 34% of the market share right now. The Commodore does not cost anything, and it has 30% um, of the market share. The Pair 2, I guess that's kind of like the Apple derivative, um, doesn't have a license, but it does have 21% of the market, and the Sinclair is falling behind at 15%. And then the map will tell you where um, each of the companies are set up. So Nintendo is actually set up in um, Argentina of all places. Like, it's not Japan anymore. And, you know, other companies here. We have Virgin, California Studios. Where's California Studios at? New York? That's blasphemous, right? Alrighty, so let's get on out of here. We're still paused, which is good. I just wanted to get you guys a little bit familiar with what's around here. Alrighty, so now that's done with, let's actually go and design our first game here. Start a new project. Uh, now to start your first project, choose the genre and platform for your new game, then give it a name. Click on the magic wand and get some help with that. Alright. So there is a strong, remember, keep this in mind too, there is a strong, ten for, a strong trend for Wild West games coming up. Huh. So I might want to at least cater my first game to that, just so I could get it off on the right foot, right? So uh, let's choose a genre. And um, might as well do strategy. However, even though we're good at strategy, have you ever heard of a strategy Wild West game? <laughs> I mean, I guess Fallout could be kind of considered a little bit, not Wild West legitly, but you know, it's kind of that deserty type of thing. Maybe you have like your games like Arcanum, even though that's more, um, I guess, steampunk. But you know, Wild West has a little bit of a, well, I mean, the steampunk does have a little bit of Wild West influence in there, right? I'm going to go with, um, I want to take advantage of this trend. So I'm going to say like in an action Wild West game, that would probably make sense, right? So let's go with action. Um... Might as well go shoot him up, right? Shoot him up, Wild West. Seems to go hand in hand. And what console? Well, there is currently available consoles and platforms. Uh, these are the currently available consoles and platforms. If you want to publish games for a particular console, you have to purchase a license for it. Then you can create as many games as you want for it. Consoles may have a lower market share, but they also have fewer problems with piracy. So again, uh, the PC games are more reliable to be pirated, as we all kind of know about that, right? I mean, some of us know. I mean, some of us actually buy our games, right? Uh, complexity represents how difficult it is to develop a game for that specific platform and how long it takes. Right now, there are only a few platforms available. As the game industry grows, their numbers will increase. Alrighty, so we're gonna go with the Commodore just because we don't have to buy a license for it. And 30% is a pretty decent market share value for it. And we're gonna be doing a shoot 'em up game, Wild West. Action. So what do we call this? Um... What do we call this? Um, I, I don't know, I mean... I don't want to be too offensive, but I also want to kind of uh, draw the audience, you know, with that title. It's all about the title sometimes, right? Say, um... How about we, uh, shoot? Shoot the brown eye. I think it sounds pretty good. Yeah, shoot the brown eye sounds about right. And, like, you know, people are like, what does that mean? Are you talking about what I think? It's kind of like, no, I'm not talking about that. 
I'm talking about this, um, you know, I'm doing a standoff right here, like one of those old western stands off. I'm gonna shoot this fucker in his brown eye because apparently he's a cyclops. So that's gonna be pretty good. You can add extra features to your game. Right now your options are very limited, but they will increase quickly. Selecting additional features improves the game, but increases development time. Got it. Alright, so right now we have nothing of this to kind of mess around with because we haven't researched any of this and this is the startup. So right now we're gonna have to go with basic sound regardless of which and video is gonna be text based. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, choose the areas you would like to focus on in your project. Click on the icons to increment or decrement the score of each area. You can set the score to be average, lower, high, or even very high. Right click on uh, every genre has a different... Right click on the icon to get some information about the area. Keep in mind that every genre has different requirements. For example, action fans may not be expecting a detailed story, but they also... But they do love eye candy. On the other hand, riveting characters and rich world history are key to a good adventure game. Alright. So... We're looking at an action, shoot 'em up, Wild West game. So I'm thinking gameplay is going to be a must for this, right? And we're probably even going to do a little bit of sound, right? You want to hear those guns going off and shit, right? So sound design, maybe a little bit of level design, and perhaps game writing. I don't think that'd be too important, so we could probably knock one for game writing off. We'll do a game engine, and we'll do content design. I'm going to basically, I, I almost even feel like removing game writing completely, but I'll leave some of it on there. I mean, well, how much can you really do with graphics when it comes to text-based stuff though, right? <clears throat> Not too much, but I'm going to leave it this way. I think this, actually, you know what, I might even knock down sound design by one and actually give it to content design. Is that right? So I get, mm, let's see, role-playing games that uh, need a huge amount of, huge amount of content. Content design creates things that can be used in level design or things which exist in a world of their own. Simulation tends to need a lot of content. Huh, really? Okay, so you know what? Good thing I checked that out. Maybe that won't be the best thing. Maybe level design is something we could kind of excel at in reality. Uh, in reality games, right? Level design. Level designs are is the discipline in creating individual levels, zones, stages, or missions to your game. It is both artistic and technical process. A designer is responsible for keeping... The idea is converted into appropriate game script, working with both tools as a programmer. If your game is bad level design, it may seem as boring or unfair by the player. A great level correctly challenges the player and makes good use of the engine features for games. Like strategy or multiplayer, superior level design is critical for success. So maybe that's fine as a three. And I might just go with um game engine. And probably even more sound design. So I'm going to go with this one. It's going to take 67 days, so the more points you put in, the longer it's also going to take for you to actually make the game. So we're going to go with, uh, you know, just about a little bit over two months over here to make this game, but I feel it's going to be worth it. Oh, nope, you stay right there in sound design. Or actually, no, 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 I made critical error here. It's supposed to be sound. Alrighty. Uh, development of your first project has just started. Did you know? You can speed up the game. Just right-click on the play pause button and lower right screen and screen. I can do that. So I will do that now because um, we finally have our thing. We don't want any game, any game time progressing over that time. I just hope that we could hit our game comes out before the trend for Wild West games comes out. Otherwise, it's going to be basically pointless. Um, you can choose a theme for your story and spend money on writing the content. Freelance game writers will be hired automatically to enrich your game with a story appropriate to the theme. If you hit a trend with the chosen theme, your project will sell better for some genres, it's a good idea to invest in a well-written story. For others, it's less important. If you have a hunch that you've created an excellent game, you may want to invest in having it translated. This may let, your market, let you market it to gamers across the world. Here's where you can influence your game on a very basic level. If you want more violence, explicit language, or sexual content, move the sliders to the right. If you want to have less of them, move the sliders to the left. To bear in mind that the genre of your game and the kind of player you're trying to attract. Get this right and you may be get better ratings and sell more units. Get it wrong and sales may crumble. So as a shoot 'em up Wild West game, I'm gonna say violence is gonna be kind of key, right? Explicit language, yeah, you know, the Wild West has its own little viol um, explicit language thing going on. Sexual content, you know, you have your, your, I guess like bars and like you know, whorehouses and shit like that. So maybe some sexual content should still be available in there, right? Um, you know, I've watched Deadwood. I know all about the um, sexual connotation when it comes to Wild West. So I'm gonna do this one, a story. Well. What's going to be the story? Um, aliens, evil, military, post apocalypse steampunk, sounds pretty cool. Future, nuclear, robots, SWAT, werewolf, wild, well, wild west, we might as well go with that, right? So, wild west story, since it is in trend. And I am going to... I'm not going to give it a story budget. I don't think it's going to be really worth it for an action shoot-em-up game. 
So I'm going to actually hold on to those 30,000. And I can't translate it. I don't have enough money because it costs actually only 14,000, huh? Hmm. You know what? It probably wouldn't be a bad idea for my first game to hit the worldwide market, right? So let's do that. Let's invest and see what happens. Again, it's kind of like a little bit of a learning phase. We'll see what happens out of all this. All right, so at this point, now we just wait. Um, you can't probably see it too well because of my fucking wallpaper here, but here is the little Pac-Man type of um, figure telling me I'm at 23% right now. And this will tell you how uh, far off you are from building your game. I just hope that we could hit this game before the Wild West um, trend dies off. Otherwise, I'm going to feel like quite the fool here. There's no way to kind of speed this up too, so we kind of have to wait at this point and kind of see what happens here. Let me get a bit of coffee in the meantime. Alrighty. We are 55%. Um, and again, when you're actually passing time, remember that you still have to kind of upkeep how much it's going to cost you to actually live, right? So here is our, I guess, monthly expenditures, right? We have a uh, running cost. And our working environment, running costs and working environments, so that's going to take a hit every single month, obviously. And as you level up, you'll pro or as you move up to different places, you will, obviously, it'll cost you more. Right now, we're living in our parents' basement. Why they're charging me two thousand dollars to live here is really beyond me. But okay, uh, how about how about this? Uh, how about to designing a distinctive case for your game? You can choose from various cases and different colors and styles to so choose one randomly. Click the magic wand. This right here, I think, is really really based for aesthetic value. But I still like the idea of it because it gives you something else to do. So I could kind of design my own case. Nothing really too crazy, nothing too fancy, but it's something at the very least. So, um, I think this looks... This is like more Indiana Jones though, isn't it? I guess the gun, the smoking gun was going to be pretty good, right? Yeah, I guess we could probably do that. <laughs> this seems a little bit too high tech for the Wild West. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that we kind of want to get involved with? Oh, wait a minute. Oh yeah. Well, this is it right here, right? This encompasses our game. And let's see, what kind of design do we want back over here? Um, that seems a little bit too high techy. I need something kind of basic for a Wild West game. I think this kind of works out. The game case needs to actually change color to make this work out, though. I think brown seems alright. Okay, we kind of lost it already. So you can't. I would love to have like a, a menu where you could see everything and then just pick one, as opposed to having us, you know, just click like this and just kind of get lucky until you find something. That's something that could definitely be worked on, I would imagine, but I'm not going to complain about it too much right now. So, alright, let me go to this. I kind of like this, and I guess we'll have to switch the color of our text here. This is like the most terribly designed game case of all time. Well, I don't know, maybe people feel terrible and be like, you know what, maybe a three-year-old designed this fucking case, I might as well buy it. The developer's son designed it as a school project, so you know what, just uh, not for the game itself, but just for the child itself, we'll just buy it out of pity. Yeah, well, maybe it'll help out with sales. It's gonna go release over worldwide soon anyway, so there you go, 100%. Development of your Frizz game has finished. As you develop games, you gain experience and improve your skills. Once the game is completed, you will be shown a summary of the experience you've gained. Alrighty, so this right here will tell us what we've leveled up on. So we have some extra experience gained. You gain extra experience from your last project. Well done. Go ahead and select a skill you would like to boost. So right now we have Game Engine at 3 already. Level Design at 2. Gameplay at 2. So I have one level up. I'm going to go with maybe... One more on gameplay. Again, big gameplay buff after all. So that's going to be good right there. Now it's time to put your new game into the market. Have a look at the curated market situation. Set the price of the game and see how well it sells. So you also actually place the price of the game. So right now... It seems that, let's see, the average market price for an action shoot 'em up game is $15. There is, there is currently no significant trend for action shoot 'em up. There is a strong trend for Wild West games. That's good. There's currently no similar game on the market, and the Commodore is 34% uh, of the market share. Uh, I'm going to keep the same name. Um, $15 is the average game cost for uh, action shoot 'em up, huh? So. Uh, because of that, I will lower my price. I could put it out high, but you know, again, it's my first game. I don't want to get too um, overzealous here. So maybe $15 market share is going to be okay. Congratulations, you just put your game first game in the market. You should see the review sales coming up as soon as possible. Good luck. All right. So now we kind of wait around. We're going to get a review for it and see how we did. I got a review already. Oh, God, our graphics are terrible. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, perhaps you should have paid more attention to the following area graphics. Really? Ah, come on, it's a text-based game. What do you, like, want, like, fonts? You want italics? You want bolded letters? It's a text-based game, damn it. 
All right, this is your first review. As you can see, each area of your game has been rated with a number from 1 to 10, given a short description. Have a look at the ratings and draw your own conclusions. Apparently, I didn't pay this fucking reviewer enough money to kind of give me a good um, bump in the sales, apparently. Alrighty, thanks a lot. What is this, IGN? GameSpot? Who is it? Uh, it looks awful. In reality, games comes up with the first release, an interesting action shoot 'em up game for the Commodore. Net Stark. Really, Net Stark? Is that how you're gonna do me dirty? I'm glad that you fucking lost your head in the first season, then. Uh, Fast-paced music fuels the on-screen action, viciously brutal moves, loads of secrets to discover and content to unlock, varied and always fun story missions, abysmal visuals. Alrighty, you know what? That was just basically my artistic style. This guy did not get it, alright? He just didn't get it. Alright, now that your game's on sale, you will receive the income from the game every day. Your game will be on sale for 90 days. Alrighty, well, we'll see how the general public feels about it. Hopefully, um, there's not too many eye candy fans out there. <laughs> Come on, trend sales, that's really terrible. 187. <laughs> that fucking. That review just sunk me. That's what happened there. Do I have any fans? I have no fans, too. There's a fan system, too. Like, the better games you sell, the better your games are. There are people we, you know, coming to, you know, support you and stuff like that. There is a very strong trend for strategy war games. Hey, you know what? That's what we excel at. We need money to actually make that happen. Alrighty. So I'm a little bit disappointed about what's happened here. Not gonna lie, I should have probably put it more in graphics, but, ah, oh, come on. It's in, yeah, I guess an action game could use graphics. But I was too enthralled with the idea that we're still in the text-based of games. I feel like you're fucking me over right now. It's kind of like a beginner's trap in a sense. Alrighty, so this is a review. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what I should have focused on, right? You don't tell me what I focus on. Our game debuted at 37 plays. That's fucking terrible. I normally have started in 16 and 19. This is the worst startup ever. Alrighty. Well, we can't really do much about it other than just go, and I would say... There should be coming up a um, research for mono sound, which I kind of want to get involved with, but... It's not happening right now, and these abysmal sales are really hurting my soul. There we go. No, the Wild West trend has died out. That's really unfortunate. So what I'm going to do right now is actually research or start a new project. And I want to take advantage of the strategy war games before that actually runs up here. So we'll do strategy, war, and we're going to go back to the old uh, PC here. Just because we know how it works and whatever. So we're going to call this one, Don't Probe Me Dude. And I think we all know what we're talking about here. Uh, unfortunately, we have to stick to basic sound because I don't have the mono thing just yet. And where would you like to focus on? I'm going to say... Mm, simulation games or strategy war games. I think it's going to have to require some level design, right? Uh, for games like strategy and multiplayer, superior level design is critical to success. So let's go boom, boom. Uh, graphics. Uh, the success of some games depend entirely on the quality of graphics. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah, action shoot em up apparently does need quite a bit of it. That's what fucked me over then. Um, game engine. And the game engine, the platform which a game is written on, and often licensed from a third party. Uh, the game engine is a, a central technology used to create a video game. It is a software library that simulates the game world and provides an interface for external components. Some higher level components of an engine are the world state collision detection, physics simulation, scripting, and artificial intelligence. Some level, low level service of a game engine are Controller input, sound processing, networking, storage, and streaming. Game engine needs to be very important in the following genres, action, and shoot em up. Okay, so I'm going to leave probably at 3 right now. I'm going to do some gameplay. Gameplay is actually really important for action and shoot em up as well. Um, so I'm going to go with 3 on this one. I have 2 left. I don't think we're going to need graphics too much for what we're doing right now. <laughs> he says that again, and he fails at it. Good sound. Okay, I'm gonna go with content design and game writing because it is kind of like you want to have be driven, right? I'm gonna say this is gonna work out. All right, so don't pro me. Just gonna be developed. Meanwhile, our game is still on the market. Seems that you have got your first fans. Yeah, <laughs> somebody took pity on me. All righty, a story. Well, there is a strong trend for samurai games, and there is a strong trend for let's see. So, well. I would love to take advantage of the Samurai thing, but I can't really call it Don't Probe Me Dude, the strategy war game on Samurais. Uh, or maybe I can. Let's be a little bit experimental. I guess we could always change the title of the game, right? So let's do Samurai. I'll just switch the title of the game before it releases. I'm not going to translate it this time because it didn't really do much for me and I'm almost broke anyway. Now in terms of the content, we're going to probably go with a lot of violence because it is going to be... Uh, a samurai game. Sexual content will probably lower this bad boy down to here. 
And explicit language, I'm not sure how explicit are samurais. <laughs> I guess we'll just leave it at midway, but a lot of violence. And that works out for me. Story budget. Huh. 30,000, I can't afford it, unfortunately. So, it is not going to... Oh, I could do some budget. No, let's just do like 5k. Well, a little bit of a story, but not too much. I mean, I need to kind of not break the bank. I need to like be able to pay the rent, right? That's what holds us, all of us um, indie developers down, you know, just needed to pay that rent, needed to get by. Alrighty, so our game's still on the market. Am I gonna get to a thousand sales at the very least? Thank God I got that much. I have one fan over here just feel pity on me. He probably thinks like I have like a bright future ahead of me if I just got like, oh, oh, he told his friends about me because I have three fans now. <laughs> Alrighty, game is off the market. Shoot the brown eye is off the market now. You sold. 1,058 units and made a profit of 11,000. This game is a good mix of violence, explicit language, and sexual content for its genre, but it could even be better. Action shoot 'em up games seem to be quite popular in the Commodore. Very low complexity. <clears throat> and this here will tell you, depending on what country, what they like, what they didn't like. So the US is very okay with the violence and the explicit language and the sexual content. However, Germany was not okay with the violence. Seems kind of really iffy to me, but okay, Germany, whatever you say. Suddenly, you're like, you know, the most peace-loving country in the world. Alrighty, so this will tell you what's what over here. That's cool. So you know what I'm gonna do? Before Don't Probe Me Dude um, is done off the market or done developing, I'm gonna call it an episode here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you were looking for, like, you know, an introduction to um, Gamers Go Makers, in case you were looking to buy it, I'll have the information in the bottom. But again, I just wanna give you a quick overview. It's a really fun game. It definitely is. Um, you know, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. But, you know, that's understandable. If you guys did enjoy the content, though, let me know. I'll probably make a few more videos of it, depending on your support for it. Leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't enjoy it, then don't feel entitled to do so. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next time.